All right, so I'm going to get this over with. Um, so my speech is, human mini brains grown in labs may help solve cancer, um, autism, and Alzheimer's. So um, a Harvard medical pioneer calls it outstanding, an incredible achievement, and a quantum leap forward in battle against cancer, Parkinson's, and Alzheimer's. Um, so can anyone tell me what cancer is? Does anyone know how cancer starts? Yes. yes. So technically, uh, cancer is just a bunch of cells not fully grown, so they just spread throughout your body. Uh, it's called also a tumor. So, um, so the way it works is it starts, I don't know, it gets like a ball on your skin, and then it just grows and grows and grows and affects in other areas that also produce cells, thus causing cancer because it affects that part of your body. <coughs> so I have a little... Um, a thing in the internet I look at cancer. So it's also called a malignant tumor, like I said, an involving abnormal cell growth, growth with the potential to invade or spread other parts of the body. The cells that grow in an abnormal way will affect the way uh, of the part that was affected. Um, so autism. I'm not even gonna ask because I didn't even know what that was before yesterday. Um, it's a neurodevelopmental uh, disorder characterized by impaired social interactions, verbal and non-verbal communication, unrestricted and repetitive behavior. So you will see a child who uh, has autism probably stacks a bunch of stuff like on a linear way. So that's a sign that he has maybe autism or he doesn't have no imagination to have stacked hands, I guess, on a, besides like a normal way. Um, Alzheimer's, well, I think we all know what Alzheimer's is. You suffer from memory loss. Uh, and accounts for 60 to 75% of all cases. Um, so it usually starts slow and gets worse over time. And then the most commonly early symptom is difficult in remembering recent events. As the disease advances, symptoms can include problems with language, disorientation, including easily getting lost, uh, mood swings, loss of motivation, not managing self-care, and behavioral issues. Okay. Uh, so, What's going on? Scientists in Ohio State University uh, say they figure out a way to grow a genetic equivalent of a nearly complete embryonic human brain. Uh, so this, they take little cells. Uh, the cells are not longer than two to three millimeters in length, and it will help. Okay, so this little blobs of tissue uh, could help researchers test drugs and other treatments that may help prevent, fight, and maybe even cure some of the most devastating disorders and diseases of our time. Um, in addition to Parkinson's disease, autism, and Alzheimer's disease, um, they could also lead to unlocking the mysteries of psychophrenia, epilepsy, traumatic brain injuries, and post-traumatic stress disorders. Um, a lot of people have it. Um, usually, I think that military people have it because of the experience they, they well, experience over there. Uh, <laughs> um, so a lot of people suffer from these diseases worldwide. Um, so furthermore, the idea of using this mini brains as a testing ground for therapies could help doctors figure out the best way of treatment. So instead of actually using a human brain, someone can create one in a petri dish and then administer the doses they need to figure out what they need to figure, like, to know how to treat it. Um, so an embryonic human brain will help doctors replicate the section of the brain called the midbrain. And I forgot my Okay, so while having an embryonic uh, doctors will test their theories on the creative midbrain instead of attacking one of the human beings. So, um, as an example, um, I have it here. So as you can see, that little green thing on the picture, that's the midbrain. And so this one looks, looks like uh, Parkinson's. So as an example, if a scientist wants to study Parkinson's, he or she may not be uh, need a midbrain. The best explanation from published researchers and organoids is the most uh, the most scientists don't have the midbrain. While undergoing the growth of an embryonic human brain, one can create the midbrain and start performing the required test. So instead of uh, having to open a human being and restricting uh, taking the midbrain, one can create it, thus not harming uh, the human being or the test subject, and it will help doctors just to perform more in detail tests of how to cure such diseases. Uh, so despite uh, all the excitement, Amit, a Ohio State biological researcher, is quick to point out that the project is still at a very early stage. Uh, the sooner we 
commercialize it and make it a model available, the sooner everyone can jump in and use it to solve these problems. Uh, brain Organize may help researchers find key solutions to some subtypes of autism within 10 years. So to think about it, within 10 years, we might have the ability to cure cancer, autism, and Alzheimer's. Um, the cure is, like the options are definitely there of how to cure it. Um, so how's I, how I see it is, um, doctors are like trying to climb the Mount Everest. So every now and then they have to climb a little bit higher and higher to get the stuff together to make that leap. So that's how I see it. Um, but yeah, to think about it, 10 years from now, we may have the solution to cancer, autism, and Alzheimer's. Okay, so, um, so answer some of the questions. One of the most popular questions that I saw that people asked their researchers about this was one, does this mean scientists could grow a miniature version of your brain? Well, it's sort of yes or no. Um, if a lactonation use some of your skin cells, they could grow an embryonic brain organ, uh, organic, that would have generic material. Uh, could that brain organic be developed into a fully grown brain? No, that's not possible yet. A fully grown brain will need a vascular system and other parts before they can meet an official definition of a brain. So the brain is such a complicated organism that right now it can't be duplicated because of all the systems that goes through it. Um, exactly how would a brain organic contribute to a new treatment? Um, scientists will use them to mimic human brains deteriorating from Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and they study how they react to innovate treatments and newly developed drugs. You still have to find a way to accelerate the aging process, such as Alzheimer's, how it affects your brain. Um, doctors will have to figure out that out, so their treatment while applying to it is a lot more accurate. Um, if, it's po if it's possible to a brain organize, um, oh, is it possible that a brain organize our conscience? No, uh, it is not possible. Uh, for the brain to be conscious, you need your five senses, so smell, touch, and taste, and all that, for the brain to be um, what did I say? Conscious. Um, theoretically, could these breaches lead to a future with artificial intelligence machines have a human-like brain? So, while researching this yesterday, that kind of reminded me of Skynet. Um, it's not other realm of possibilities. If someone someday figures out a way to put a human brain into an AI, um, that has sensory input, now you're creating an AI hybrid with organic brains, then that's a whole different story. Then you are talking about what's being covered uh, in scientific fiction and scientists, no, science fiction movies. But it would say it's a very far away possibility, if at all. And then that's my whole speech. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.